Welcome everyone, this is Joe Dagger, the host of the Business 901 Podcast. With me today is Gorko Adjik. And I tried that, I'm not sure if I'm right. We'll get it, we'll get it straightened out. Close enough, close, close enough. enough. Thank you. Okay, he is a strategic software delivery consultant who works with ambitious teams to improve the quality of their software products and processes. He specializes in agile and lean quality improvement, in particular agile testing, specification by example, and behavior-driven development. Goko, thanks for joining me, and I, for one, have way too many of your books, and I got to start out by how did you get to be such a prolific writer all of a sudden? Well, Theo, thanks uh, for inviting me. It's very nice to be on the podcast. Um, I try not to sleep, so I get a lot more time to write. Your books are very different in a in a good way. They're typically, I don't want to say not long and copy or not, you know, 10, 12 pages of straight reading. They're, they're very visual, kind of what I would say sound bites in them and stuff a lot of times. And... It makes for more action than maybe reading sometimes, I guess, okay? But how does that reflect on who you are and the work you do, or does it? I think it does. I'm a very visual thinker. I like to draw when I'm thinking. I like to draw when I'm talking to people. I think books shouldn't be a wall of text that you can't consume. Like we're doing usability for software, we need to do usability for books as well. And... There's a couple of really, really good books uh, that start with, oh, this is going to be difficult to read. But if you're writing a book that's going to be difficult to read, that's kind of, you know, you're not respecting your audience. So (laughs) I try to write books that are easy to consume and that are easy to remember. My first familiarity with you was Impact Map. Oh, nice. Did that book kind of catapult you to forefront? I know you've written a couple books before that, but... Tell me about how, kind of how that evolved. I'm just kind of interested in your story a little. Well, impact mapping evolved out of um, my horrible personal failure. Like, you know, lots of good things evolve. I was a CTO of a startup sometime in 2007, which sounds like ancient times now, where we lost a few million British pounds delivering software very efficiently and effectively, but not really achieving any business outcomes. I was very, very proud of the way how we set up the whole technical part of the process. And then we effectively set up a machine that burned through a lot of cash very, very quickly. I was kind of personally very hurt by the fact that we lost so much money without achieving anything. And I realized that somebody somewhere must have solved this problem and started researching as much as I could on on all those things. Generally... When I make a stupid mistake, then I tend to learn everything I can about that. So I never make the mistake again. And that's how I stumbled upon kind of lots of different things that got synthesized into impact mapping. Do you think that the writing kind of sorts out your ideas more or is it just a compilation of what you already know? No, no, writing, writing sorts out ideas every time. Every time I've written a book, I've learned a ton about the topic because I end up putting things on a piece of paper, I need to make it consistent and then start spotting gaps there. And likewise, you know, whenever you have something that gets sent to people you respect to review, they come back with a lot of questions to challenge you on that and come back with a lot of ideas what to research next. So every time I've written a book, I've learned a lot just in the process of writing it. So that's a fantastic way of getting to explore a topic more or forcing yourself to explore a topic more. I always remember in the military, they, they always ask, you know, how many people know about cold weather training, okay? And, you know, the guy that didn't raise his hand, they'd go, okay, you teach the class, okay? Yeah, I guess, you know, being able to teach something means that you have to really learn all the edge cases so you can defend it when people start having questions. And that sometimes leads to unexpected paths. I guess all the books I've written follow a thread where there's an unanswered question in one of those parts of the book that got me to write the next one. The first book I wrote was a pretty much technical book on testing that then got me to start researching how organizations actually need to collaborate between the different roles to get that 
information together so that you can do that. So my first book had a subtitle that was effectively the title of my second book. And my second book had a chapter that basically just said, well, you know, of course, all this testing is good. But if you're building software that's not achieving a business goal, then it's particularly useless. And then impact mapping came along to answer that question. So kind of it all follows on from unanswered questions from previous books, I guess. Seems that impact mapping was where you kind of switched. You were writing the traditional, you know, I haven't read the previous books, but just looking at the cover and, and looking at them real quickly, they seem more the regular book style. And then impact mapping, user stories, and seem to take mm. a whole shift in what you're writing. Is that true? Yeah, uh, the first book uh, was when I still didn't know how to do books. So I started writing the book because I had a topic I wanted to write about and I had a contract with a publisher and then apparently due to some internal kind of, I don't know, organizational problems, they canceled the contract after the manuscript was already written. So it took me about a year to write a book and then they said we decided not to publish it. And I was really kind of broken by that and then I thought maybe I'll find another publisher but then I don't want to go through this whole thing again so I self-published it and then for the second book I tried to go through the traditional route and see the difference what happens when you work with a publisher and then I realized that's a complete waste of time so spec by example was um I probably could have done it a year earlier if I did it self-published and could have done it better because then I would have creative control over it. So after the whole experience, I just decided kind of I can pay people to copy edit and I can pay people to illustrate my books and then I can have complete control over the process. So that's why all the other books are easier to read and easier to consume because I have full creative control over the content. What made that switch from that regular book? What was, you know, in the impact mapping? I, I'm really inquisitive about how you, how, that, I, I, how, that, how think, that flipped. Impact mapping, impact mapping from the start of work to the book appearing on Amazon took six months. Specification, by example, from the start of when I started writing it until it finally appeared took, I think, two and a half years. When it came out, I was really disappointed with uh, how it looked and how many typos were in the book. And the content I'm, I'm happy with, but the rest I wasn't really happy. And I, I wanted to have kind of a better book. I wanted to have books that are easier to consume, better to kind of, you know, if I've invested all that time in creating the material, I, I thought people should at least be able to consume it easier. And that's why I've decided to self-publish Impact Mapping and all my other books after that were self-published. So, yeah, the, the, basically the idea is let's make books easier to understand and easier to read. I enjoyed the conversation very much, but we got to end it somewhere, okay? And I, I think that uh, this is a good place. What's the best way for someone to get a hold of you and to stay up to speed with what you're talking about? I speak at lots of conferences, so, you know, find me at a conference. Uh, my website is goiko.net. It's goiko with a J. Probably the best place to keep up to date. You're on Twitter and, and on LinkedIn. Uh, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. All the links are on the website. It's very difficult to pronounce a Twitter link, especially for kind of a Slavic name. <laughs> or, 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 and get people to actually understand it. But... Um, if you have a website for the podcast, I'm sure you can include that. I, I'll include the link in there. And I definitely want to thank you uh, for all your time and thank uh, you. the knowledge that you've shared. I, I had a great time. It was a pleasure. This podcast will be available on the Business Title One iTunes Store and the Business Title One blog site. So I want to thank everyone for listening. Thanks. Thanks.